Okay, let's uh, talk hematology for just a second. Um, I think most people have a pretty good grasp on the indices. Um, you've done that in hematology, so that should be uh, a review. But I find that a lot of students have a hard time with this whole idea of um, cell counts from a hemocytometer. And there's several different ways you can do this. Um, they're all related or they're all mathematically the same. Um, however, some of them are uh, worked out a little bit different. So I'm going to show you the two most common ways, or maybe one uh, common way and then the way that I like to use. Um, so basically what we're talking about is you're given um, a number of cells, and usually that's related to you as a number of cells in a certain number of squares. So the squares that we're talking about, if we were to look at a hemocytometer, are either these bigger squares, which we refer to as a white blood cell square, or if you can see these smaller squares in the middle that we refer to as a red blood cell square. So again, the bigger ones are white blood cell squares. These tiny ones in the middle would be considered red blood cell squares. So depending on how many cells we have in this hemocytometer, we might count all nine of these white blood cell squares. We might just count the four corner white blood cell squares. Or we may have so many cells in here that it would only make sense to count a few of the red cell squares in the middle. So typically, what we're dealing with is a number of cells and a certain number of squares. So the first method, which is probably what you've learned in hematology, is where you take the number of cells that you have divided by the number of squares, whether they're white blood cell or red blood cell squares, times a volume correction, times your dilution factor. So let's work through one of those. So in my example, um, I say let's practice. So it says we got a bloody spinal tap from the emergency room, and this is at the end of uh, the unit three presentation. It says you have a bloody spinal tap from the emergency room. So the first step is you dilute it, and we're going to see that our dilution factor is, uh, the dilution is one to a hundred, so we have a dilution factor of 100. It says you count 22 white blood cells in four squares on one side, so we're going to assume those are WBC squares. And I'll be uh, more careful to tell you what they are. So 22 and 4 white blood cell squares on one side, and 25 and 4 WBC squares on the other side. Well, the first step is we want to make sure that these counts match within about 10%. So if I've got a value of 25, I'm looking for a count that's 2.5 to 3 cells off, um, you know, give or take a cell or two. So 22 and 25, those are pretty much the same. If they were drastically different, I would know that I charged the hemocytometer um, unequally on one side versus on the other side, and I would need to correct that before I did a count. So once I verified that these are okay, I could average the two and then use that average over four white blood cell squares and continue with my problem, or I can just add them up and uh, kind of simplify things. So we could say this in other terms as 47 total white blood cells counted in eight total squares. The volume correction for a white blood cell square is 10. We would multiply that by our dilution factor of 100, and we would have 47 divided by 8 times 10 times 100. We get a count of 5,875 white blood cells and we typically refer to these as per millimeter cubed. Not so bad.